have to another module recap. This time around, we have module 8. So just to give the big picture, in module 5, 6 and 7, I looked at the control volume approach. I picked my control volume to be my entire system, right? And then I applied and see what happened. In module 8, what I have done is I've changed gears. Instead of looking at this control volume for the entire system, I shrink it into a single point. And I calculated the conservation of mass to begin with, just like module 5. Okay? And I showed you that. Now you will see the equation here. The conservation of mass equation doesn't have any integrals anymore. It has partial derivatives, right? Um, so that was a difference uh, in this approach. In addition to that, what I did was, well, just like module 5, I introduced you special cases. Guess what is the first special case? Steady. And what happened? For right hand side, first term dropped out. Exactly the same. That's good. That's consistency right there. Good. And then what I did was, um, I introduced constant density as well, just like the second special case in the module 5. I showed you the equation. You will see that the density is dropped out, right? Fairly uh, manageable. And I don't have any more uh, uniform flow. I don't need to have that special case. I will be able to now analyze non-uniform flows. I don't need to worry about the uniform flow assumption anymore. And then I did a question to illustrate you if one velocity component, let's say in the U is given, how am I going to calculate the V? One thing that you may want to be very careful in that analysis is that as I'm taking partial derivatives, not regular derivatives, my integration constant is not plus c anymore. It is a plus of f of the function that I have not accounted for yet. So you may want to note that. And after this, what I did was, I'm not quite done with uh, you know, conservation of mass. I introduced a function. And I call that particular con function a string function. And you will see the equation up here, how it relates to my u and v. Obviously, it can be u and w as well. But you know, by convenience, we call it u and v, right? Um, and I showed you the name, stream function is fairly close to streamline that we have covered before. And I showed you the relation, right? When this constant is equal to a con constant number as opposed to a function, I will call it as a streamline. In addition to that, I, uh, this is very important that when I define a stream function, right, when I give you the stream function, what happens is continuity or the conservation of mass equation is automatically satisfied. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay? If I ask you, please go ahead and check whether the conservation of mass is satisfied, you can go ahead and check it. There's no harm in it. But what you will do is you will automatically get zero is equal to zero. Unless you make a mistake, obviously. Right? Also, I looked at a fairly actually a useful case where I have two streamlines and I need to obtain the volumetric flow rate between them. How am I going to do it? I explained in my lecture videos. You may want to visit that. So then I sold an example illustrating how these things work with some numbers. Okay? And then I started with a concept called vorticity and velocity potential. I gave the definition of vorticity. It's up there. And I showed you that if vorticity is equal to zero, then my flow is called potential flow or irrotational flow. Okay? And what I did was, if my flow is irrotational, I defined another function. And I called this time on velocity potential. Okay? Um, and I showed you how to obtain it, as well as I went over several examples of how to relate the velocity potential, stream function, conservation of mass, if my velocity is given. So I went through several exercises for you. One thing about the velocity potential that we shouldn't forget is, if the velocity potential is given to you, is it supplied to you, the irrotationality condition is automatically satisfied. But remember, this is a one-way street. Okay? If my irrotationality condition is given, it doesn't mean my velocity potential is automatically exists. Okay? It's just a one-way street. Be careful about it. Okay? This pretty much sums up the module 8 for us.